We're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Let's take a look at uh, the budget this morning has been passed by the National Assembly. The National Assembly has passed an aggregate expenditure of 21.82 trillion naira as the budget for 2023 fiscal year. The figure represents an increase of 1.3 trillion naira from the 20.51 trillion naira estimate presented by President Mohamed Buhari to the Parliament in October 2022. The 1.3 trillion increase in the budget size rose from additional funding and marked for the National Population Commission, that's the NPC, ahead of the planned 2023 uh, census. 173 billion for the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, ahead of the 2023 general elections. The Nigerian Army, Navy, Nigerian Police, Ministers of Agriculture, Health, Aviation and Science and Technology. The National Assembly also increased the oil uh, price benchmark proposed for the budget from 70 to 75 dollar per barrel. They, however, retained all the parameters as earlier proposed by the president, like 1.69 million barrels oil production per day uh, at um, 435.57. Nara to the dollar, 3.75% uh, GDP growth rate, and 17.16% inflation rate. These are all assumptions. Now, out of the 21.827 trillion Nara, 967.486 billion is for statutory transfer, 8.329 trillion is for non debt recurrent costs. 5.972 trillion is for capital expenditure and 6.557 trillion is for deficit f servicing. Under the 967.48 billion statutory transfer, the National Assembly uh, Office has uh, 30.492 billion naira, Senate 33.267 billion, the House of Representatives 51.994 billion, National Assembly Service Commission uh, has 10.55 billion naira, the legislative aid 16.2 520 billion uh, general services you have 11.370 billion naira now the list is almost endless but uh, this is a point where we you know bring in our guest this morning shegu shopitan thank you so much for being part of the show uh, i'm sure that you have seen the budget as it were you know to the latter or the critical part of this budget first of all i'd like to share your thoughts on this increase by 1.3 trillion what do you make of it um, look, um, thanks for having me. Let's see. Good morning, um, viewers. Um, well, this is it's, it's now, as I'm sure all financial observers know, and all political observers know, it's, it's, a, it's a ritual. It's, a, it's an annual ritual. Um, it basically starts off with, you know, um, the, the National Assembly, the, the, the Federal Executive sending their budget proposals to the National Assembly, the various ministries and past that are going there to defend the figures as it relates to their own MDAs. Um, and then the National Assembly going through a process with their committees, harmonization, and then final passage. And every single year, for as long as I can remember, the National Assembly changes the budget. They, and usually those changes are increments. Um, so a 1.3, uh, two trillion um, increase is in keeping with you know this tradition. Uh, a change in some of the budget benchmarks, especially the benchmark for uh, the crude oil crisis, is also um, an annual ritual. Uh, why the National Assembly feels that they need to do this year in year out? Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but but this is what they do every year, and and for me. It's, it's really neither here nor there. And I say this because, look, at the end of the day, this is the budget. It's a policy instrument. Uh, the federal government knows exactly what they want to do. They know the projects and the programs that they want to pursue um, and the policy direction from a fiscal perspective for this coming year. And they put a document together to reflect that. So whatever changes that the National Assembly makes, as long as it's not material, um, should not impact that negatively. The only time that this will be a problem is if they reduce um, um, some of these figures, especially significant projects. And we've seen that happen in the past. You know, we remember a time when 
uh, uh, Mr. Raji Pashala complained about the, the, the National Assembly reducing the cost, the, the amount provided for the Lagos Ibadan Express project, Express vehicles. I think that was about three, four years ago. You know, so things like that have, uh, has happened in the past, and those types of things can impact budget implementation. But in this case, I don't see any significant problem, and I think that uh, the federal government will go ahead and do what they had intended to do at the initial. Well, um, if you say you don't see any problem, some have spotted it and it's also there. It's the fact that uh, the National Assembly for 2023, let's not forget that uh, we're very constrained. We're talking about a country with stressed public finance and debt profile. The National Assembly has increased her own budget by 59 billion, appropriating 228.1 billionaire for themselves. Uh, a budget where you have a deficit over exceeding, um, you know, budget for capital expenditure. So is there still not a problem with this budget? Um, the deficit, you know, so this is, of course, I mean, this is a different issue entirely. Um, whether the National Assembly had increased the budget or not, the, the, the issue you speak about now, you know, um, is a problem has been a problem for a while and i think until the government begins to be more creative uh with the entire budgeting process and with its revenue uh generation strategies will continue to be a problem um so having uh, a budget deficit uh of 10.7 trillion um as against the capital expenditure for example of 5.35 trillion says a lot to me because what this then says is that we are borrowing a significant chunk of our borrowing to fund this project is not even going to be spent on developmental projects in terms of um capital expenditure in terms of uh, uh you know infrastructure development roads rail networks and all of that a, a chunk of that will be spent on recurrent recurrent um um non-debt uh, 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 purposes, you know, so that that is a significant problem. Um, it can't be wished away. It needs to be dealt with, but you know, it, it's going to take some doing. And whoever is going to fix this problem has got to be very courageous, and we will we'll need we'll have some very difficult decisions uh, to make down the line. It certainly won't be this government, and I and I think that if we don't witness any change in in, in government, for example, then. You know this ritual is going to continue um into the foreseeable future and 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 it's a it's a path way down the, the end of this road is is not not going to be pleasant it's something that needs to be addressed and needs to be urgently fixed but i'd like to ask you why is it that over time we have actually spent so much or allocated it seemed like a pattern for us as a country allocated so much you know to recurrent costs than uh, what we you know allocate to capital expenditure and when we understand that the country that's keen about development will pay more attention you know to capital expenditure rather than you know recurrent so why is it like for 2023 i mean i beg your pardon yes of course it's 2023 uh you know it's been proposed we're looking at 8.32 trillion naira for the non-debt recurrent costs and for capital expenditure like i rightly mentioned 5.972 trillion why don't we or why haven't we why have we always been, you know, in this pattern of, um, you know, budgeting? Well, um, the, there are two issues, you know, involved in this. Um, the first one is that the budget itself is too small. Mercy, it's it's too small um, for a population of two hundred million people. A budget of two twenty trillion naira is simply won't cut it. If you if you cut down to dollars. Um, this budget is about 30, 33, 30, 30 something billion dollars. And if you reduce that per capita, we're talking of um, something the range of about $200 or thereabouts per capita. It's simply too small if you benchmark that against uh, our contemporaries, whether you want to talk about countries like Ghana or South Africa, in, you know, of course, you can't even go to develop the economies. So the first thing uh, to, to note in this is that the budget size itself is too small the government is simply not generating enough revenues and is simply not spending enough 
to drag Nigeria out of its poverty trap, out of its heavy infrastructure deficit, you know, and all of that. The second part of that issue you raise is, of course, the size of government itself. Um, for a government that is budgeting 20 trillion, um, the, 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 the budget um, for recurrent expenditure is almost 70%, in fact, over 70% of the entire expenditure profile um, for, for the year. And, and that simply um, is unacceptable. What it means is that we're spending more money, paying salaries, uh, paying allowances, uh, paying things like uh, um, uh, per diem for travel, paying travel expenses, you know, and all of that as against building roads, as against building schools, as against, you know, providing water, you know, irrigation, damming, and so many other projects. Let's not even go into the issue of power, you know. So the government needs to look at the size of the civil service, even though some would argue that the problem is, is not in the size of the civil service, but in the productivity of the civil service. Uh, again, it's a completely different question. Um, so do we want to reduce the size of the civil service, or do we want to better deploy the, the, the people that are working for this government so that they can generate more, generate more revenue, and then we can you know, spread more development? So you, you can approach it from from either angle but whichever way you look at it obviously you know this skewed percentage of about 30 for capital and 70 percent for recurrent expenditure is extremely unhealthy it's something that needs to be fixed but like you said this is not a new problem we've been on this for a long time and um again it will take some very very bold brave tough decision making to fix this problem of the ratio, the, the capital to recurrent expenditure ratio of, of, of our budgets. Um, I, I don't think our politicians have what it takes to, to, to do what is necessary. All right, then. So, um, still looking at, you know, this issue, especially in comparison now, debt servicing will go up 6.55 trillion, which is more than, um, you know, the capital expenditure. Of course, we know that it's 5.35 uh, 5 uh, trillion naira. So why, why are we, is this economically wise? What's the rationality behind all of this um, kind of budgeting pattern? At the end of the day, it still boils down to the fact that the government is not generating enough revenue. So they have to find a way to, 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 fund, to fund their budget. Um, the capital expenditure of 5.3 trillion, I mean, when you weigh that against um, the, the, the sheer volume of money that needs to be spent on uh, infrastructure development is, is, is a drop, is a pin, is a, is a pin in an ocean, basically. It's, it's nothing. Um, and then to then finance that uh, with debt exclusively um, is unconscionable. Now, let us not forget, and I think we need to keep an eye on this as well, because it's having a direct bearing and a direct impact on everyday Nigerians. It's the fact that it's budget deficit financing is being done uh, in two ways. It's, it's being done by uh, actual outright debt, foreign loans, um, and we all know where we are with that. We're right back to where we were before um, the administration of um, um, President Obasanjo uh, uh, got us uh, a debt, a debt reprieve um, in, two, in, in the early 2000s. We're right back there uh, with our debt profile now exceeding $30, $30, $30 billion. Um, but apart from that is, is also the fact that, you know, ways and means is a major part of financing these deficits. Ways and means for the, for the layman is simply that the CBN will print money, will print currency, you know, so the government needs, um, funds to, to finance this budget. The CBN will simply issue bonds and then back it up by printing money to give to the government, you know, and that. Um, is, is a big problem because it has continued. Uh, as of last count, I think we're talking about well over 20 trillion naira as the overall um, outstanding ways and means um, um, account of the CBN. This needs to be paid down. Um, you know, and this has a direct bearing on things like inflation. So when the CBN, for example, says that there's a lot of cash in circulation, they're trying to mop that up uh, through the currency redesign, for example, that they are currently implementing, well, 
they started this, you know, they, 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 they created this monster. They, they started this problem. Um, maybe not the CBN per se, but the federal government itself. And of course, the CBN is a part of the federal government. You know, so this budget deficit financing strategy needs to be seriously explored and seriously addressed before, you know, it pushes us over the brink. Because at, at, as at last count, we're well over 20% um in inflation rate is, is our worst inflation rate i think in about 20 years or thereabouts you know and and the, there is nothing that suggests that it's going to get better very very clearly from all indications this is going to get worse and we run the risk of running into some sort of galloping runaway inflation uh you know go for beat you know you don't want to see a situation where there's food on the shelves or there's no food on the shelf and people have money and they just simply can't buy you know so prices skyrocket so i think the fiscal uh, authorities need to be very, very, very careful with how they go about this. I've always maintained that the government needs to be more creative with its, especially with its capital um, expenditure financing strategy. We need to leverage more on private capital and, um, you know, the private sector to help government out instead of this boring um, strategy that we just seem to be fixated on. Mm. Okay, uh, even though it's also been reported that um, the National Assembly had rejected the President's request for ways and means for, uh, of course, uh, 2023 or thereabout or 2022, uh, that has been rejected. Fast forward, let's take a look at the assumptions of the 2023 budget or proposed budget, hoping that the President would assent, which you have said, you know, there's nothing wrong. The President would, uh, you know, just give a nod to all of that. Now, um, uh, looking at these assumptions, uh, crude oil price is at 75 uh, dollar per barrel and crude production 1.6 billion or 1.69 million barrels per day uh, that's it fx is at uh, 435.57 dollar as against the dollar and then of course uh, growth rate that's the gdp is at 3.75 percent inflation is at 17.16 percent uh, what do you make of this assumption do you think it's poor and uh, specifically when you look at the oil outputs and also the fx does it also seem unrealistic and uh, the inflation is it weak or strong your thoughts okay so so i think that as as usual uh the minister of finance uh the budgeting office have uh, been um, um, optimistic with, with the budget assumption that they're using uh, because, you know, I, apart from uh, the benchmark crude oil price, which is well below current um, um, international crude prices, um, all the other assumptions are very um, um, aggressively optimistic. Um, inflation being benchmarked at 176 or thereabouts in the budget, as again, the 22% thereabouts that we have now is a five percent difference a five percent difference is extremely unlikely to be made up in the course of one year you know so to see a drop in from 22 percent where it is now uh to 17 percent before the end of next year is extremely unlikely uh, if anything it will probably go higher before it comes down if it will come down at all of course inflation coming down will be um a result of very clear uh, monetary policy initiatives and possibly fiscal policy initiatives. And I really don't think that that's what the benchmark will be achieved. Um, the GDP growth rate 3.75 is neither here nor there. Uh, the GDP growth has been, you know, it, it's probably going to trend around that area. So I don't have any problem with that. But the other one that I think needs to also be looked into carefully is the exchange rate benchmark at 435. Uh, naira to the dollar or thereabouts is you know that's that's slightly below the official rate the challenge of course is that we know that the official rate um is running at almost half of the parallel market rate and this is creating a significant structural imbalance in the entire economy and it, you know it's about time that the government really begins to look at these things and decide on how uh, to, to fix uh, some of these wide gaps in between the parallel rate and the official rate, not forgetting that even the official rate is multiple. So the 435 or is it 437 that they've used in this budget is not the only official rate. We have some people buying at way lower than that and some buying at slightly higher than that. You know, so there's a lot of confusion and mixed signaling even in the exchange rate policy that needs to be addressed. So 
Ultimately, the, the, the other thing that I should address is also the uh, production, oil production benchmark. And I think as at the last count, yes, production had started going up, but we're still um, around 1.3, uh, 1.4 million bar barrels per day. We're getting 1.69. Well, uh, it's it's in the hand of government. I think if they do the right things and I thought you were going to say it's in the hand of God. <laughs> No, <laughs> we have to leave God out of this. I mean, even God is watching us and saying, guys, you know, you have everything you need. You know, and we all know why the, 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 the production, uh, uh, food production is so low. The oil is being stolen. It's no longer news, you know. So um, it's it's really, really up to government. If government wants that production bench, um, actual production to go back to the 2.2 um, uh, million barrels per day that we used to have, or at least to the 1.8 million barrels per day OPEC uh, quota that we have, they can do it, you know, within a matter of months. So that is something that they really need to look at because obviously that has a major bearing on the revenue profile of the government. Uh, you know, so the assumptions are fairly okay. Uh, some are a bit off the mark, but all, all in all, I think that's ma majorly the achievable. Okay. As we close this down now quickly, uh, for a country that has always or is grappling with the issue of revenue and we have always talked about diversification of the economy uh we're still looking at you know all, all taxes estimated at 2.43 um, trillion naira for non-oil i mean revenue that's what we hope to you know uh gain however uh, there's a lot of attention you know on the oil sector at 1.92 trillion naira do you think that we're ever going to get to a point where we shift the focus from you know oil to other sectors of the economy well you know the the irony of this is that our economy is actually extremely highly diversified um the economy so the gdp if you look at the gdp and you look at the components of the gdp Oil contributes less than 10%. You know, uh, you have things like agriculture, things like manufacturing, and of recent, in the last 10 years, even the creative industry um, are really, really contributing significantly to output, you know, to, to economic output within the, the country. The challenge that the government has is that the output is not being translated to revenues. Uh, this is the problem. So our economy is diversified. It's our re revenue sources that are not diversified. And the reason for this is that government is simply not doing the basic stuff that needs to be done. So things like um, identity database, you know, the fact that till today, uh, national NIN, yes, the government has, is doing better in terms of bringing more people into that net, but we're still very far off being able to say precisely who is who and where they are. And until you, if you, don't, if you can't do that, then you can't capture, the government can't tax those people. We need to bring more people into the tax net. We need to bring more sectors into the tax net so that the government can generate revenues from the productive activity that is going on. Half of our economic activity is still in the informal sector that the government can't access. So these are the things that government needs to be addressing in a very um, methodical and strategic manner to ensure that revenues can increase significantly. If government focuses enough effort in, this, in these areas of you know, identity management, uh, the tax net, the size of the tax net, you know, you can easily double or even triple, you know, the revenue profile of the government, you know, but, but, but again, you know, all these things require a lot of political will and, um, good in, you know, a, a, a desire to do the right thing. And unfortunately, over the years in this country, that has not been, um, uh, you know, apparent in, in the activities of our government. So we pray that, or we hope, or, you know, Nigerians should do something about ensuring that whoever comes in in the next election will have the desire to do the right thing. All right, then. Uh, Shegu Shokpitan, we need to go now, but um, there are also, you know, still thought whether or not the president will probably have a delay he would give on his accent or assent to uh, this uh, budget uh, before 2023. Well, fingers are crossed and we see how all of that pans out. Thank you so much for being part of the show. Thanks for having me. Shegu Shokpiton is the chairman at Network Right in Lagos. We appreciate you. Have a Merry Christmas and a wonderful 2023. We take a break. When we return, we'll talk sports. Please stay with us. <laughs>